Hello Grade 7's Natural Sciences lesson about to happen now. I'm Helen and I'm about to enjoy my next few minutes with you. Today we are focusing on investigating fuel as an energy source. So in our last lesson you learned about two forms of potential energy. We learned about elastic potential energy for example, the energy that we have when springs are compressed or when elastic is stretched. And we understood from different situations that the more an object is stretched, the more energy it has in its elastic potential energy store. But elastic potential energy isn't the only kind of stored energy that we can have. We can store energy according to its position and its mass, or according to the position of the object that we're going to move and the mass of that object. And this is called gravitational potential energy. The greater the mass and the greater the height of the object, the more potential energy that is stored. So we've learned about these two forms already, elastic potential energy and gravitational potential energy. Today, we're going to consider a third form of potential energy. Fuels, things that we call fuels, possess chemical potential energy. Right, so that means that the substances are made up of chemicals that are going to react with one another. And in reacting, they are going to pow, release the energy. Sometimes it's going to be different mixtures of chemicals in the objects that have different amounts of energy in their chemical potential energy store. So let's look at these ideas of fuels and name some of them. We can look at petrol or diesel. That is a chemical that once we react it together with some heat, it's going to cause our cars to move. So our cars, when they are moving, or our trucks, any vehicle that is fuel, um, it, it, its source or its source of energy is fuel, it is going to move as a result of chemical potential energy. Of course, we could drive our car to the top of a hill Without switching it on, we could roll the car down the hill. Then we're using gravitational potential energy. We could put a big spring behind our car and let the spring go and let our car fly through the air forward. We would be using elastic potential energy. But most of the times we don't rely on our car rolling down hills or big springs to push our car forward. What we are relying on is the chemical potential energy in their fuel. Wood is another source of chemical potential energy, and it is the energy of the chemicals themselves, the carbons and the hydrogens and the oxygens, all of those chemicals in the wood that have the potential energy. Coal is another example. What about the chemicals inside one of these batteries or cells? That has chemical potential energy. Inside that battery or inside that cell, there are chemicals. And when we put it into our torch, for example, and we switch our torch on, we allow that chemical energy to be transferred into electrical energy and our torch light comes on. So my question to you is, do you rely on chemical potential energy for your survival? What is your fuel source? You don't guzzle petrol like a car. You don't uh, burn wood inside your tummies to make you work and have movement. You don't have the same kinds of chemicals as the battery has inside it. What is your fuel? Can you think about that? Food is 
your form of chemical potential energy. So all living things, whether you are a plant or whether you are you or whether you are a tiny little bacterium living in your throat, all living things need a form of nutrition. And that nutrition is what provides us, or the tree, with energy. So food is our chemical potential energy. There are different kinds of foods that contain different amounts of energy. I'm sure you've learned about this, something like a, a food pyramid, that we know that the energy that is present in carbohydrates is going to have, or foods that have carbohydrates in them are going to have much more chemical energy than something like proteins, for example. So proteins have slightly less chemical potential energy than oils and carbohydrates. So we've discovered that there is elastic potential energy, there's gravitational potential energy, there's chemical potential energy. Can we measure chemical potential energy? Well, when we talk about measuring something, we want to find out how much there is of it. So we could, for example, measure the mass of this block of chromium. We would plonk it onto the scale and we would see that our needle would move and we could measure it in terms of grams or kilograms. We would see how much there is, all right? How much chromium have we got in this big lump of metal? We could also measure other things. We could measure the speed of a car, for example, and that we can't measure in mass. We measure it in different units. We would say that the speed is measured in kilometers per hour. So how many kilometers can this car travel in an hour? Well, if the car is going slower, it's going to be traveling less kilometers per hour, maybe 20 kilometers per hour. If it's going very fast, it's going at 100 kilometers per hour. That means in one hour, it will move 100 kilometers. Those are units of measurement that we're now, by the time we've got to grade seven, quite familiar with. But how do we measure energy? And it's so difficult. Remember I told you, I can't give you a piece of energy. I can't pour you a glass of energy. So we have a different system of measuring our energy. Energy is measured in joules. All right, have a look at the word. It's got a strange spelling. It's pronounced joules, but it has this U and this E in it. It's named after a scientist, Joule, who worked with energy and developing ways of measuring energy. We say that just as there are a thousand grams in one kilogram, there are a thousand joules in a kilojoule. And we could write a thousand small j in one small k small j kilojoules. All right, so now we've learned that there's a unit to measure our amount of chemical energy. And do you know that you are familiar with this idea, and this concept of measuring energy already? Have you ever looked at the small writing on food packaging? Now remember, we've just explained that food is in fact an example of the chemical potential energy that we need to fuel our movement, our growth, and all the different reactions that happen inside our body to keep us alive. The information on the food packaging gives us nutritional information about the amount of energy stored in the food. So, for example, we could have a, a typical 
box of breakfast cereal and we would find something like per portion, per portion of 30 grams, we have five grams of sugar, three grams of fat. These are saturated fats, the bad fats, 0.2 grams. And we also have some salt, small amount of salt in that cereal. But here's what we're interested in today. How much energy is available? How much chemical potential energy is available in a 30 gram serving? Well, we can see that it's written as 1046 kilojoules. And then you may see this also written with it. Kilocalories. Now the Americans use a different system of naming, right? They need to be different. They don't measure distance in kilometers. They measure it in miles. They don't measure volume or capacity in terms of liters and milliliters. They use gallons, right? They're different. They use kilocalories. Let's ignore that for the moment and just recognize that that is just simply another system of measuring energy. We use the kilojoule system like the rest of the world except America. Okay, so kilojoules tell us that in one serving of cereal, we are going to get 1046 kilojoules. But what does that mean? We can translate that into the percentage of what our daily reference intake should be. This bowl of cereal at 30 grams will give us 12% of the total amount of energy that we need for the day to run our bodies. Of course, it's on an average, all right? Uh, and, and it's for an adult, not a child. We can also see that the whole box contains 18 servings. So we get a lot of information from that food label. And uh, yeah, I think you know what I'm going to say. What I want you to do after our lesson today is to go and do a little bit of an investigation in the food cupboard. Don't eat too much of what you find, but turn tins over and boxes over and look at the energy store of that particular kind of food. Sometimes the label will give you an energy store for the whole amount, like a slab of chocolate. Sometimes, like our little box of cereal, it will give us per serving the amount of energy. I could ask you in an exam paper, if we have 1,046 kilojoules per serving, how much energy is in the whole box of cereal? And you would have to take 1,046 kilojoules and you would have to multiply it by 18 servings and you would get your answer. So let's summarize what we've learned. We need energy to make our bodies function and we get our energy from the food that we eat. And the food is the chemical potential energy. And the molecules which make up our food have energy stored inside them. We eat that food, we use the stored energy that moves our muscles, it performs all our bodily functions like growth, and it's stored in the form of chemical potential energy. So what you're going to do today, not only going to explore the food cupboard and find out what's written on these labels, I'd like you to make a chart where you list all the foods you eat and you try and work out how many kilojoules of energy it takes to run your body, the great machine, for one day. All right, by adding up all of the kilojoules, and remember what you're doing is you're adding up the chemical potential energy that your body needs to be able to transfer it into kinetic energy of movement, growth, and all the metabolic reactions that take place inside your cells. Now, it's an interesting 
um, little exercise to do because you'll find that on some days when you eat that whole slab of chocolate, for example, you consume more energy. And what is your body going to do with that extra chemical energy? Well, it's going to store it maybe as fat inside your body. So how you're going to get rid of that fat is use more kinetic energy and more movement to what we say burn up that extra stored potential energy. All right, have fun as you explore your chemical potential energy sources. But that's it for today. Goodbye, grade sevens.